So lymphovenous bypass is the, one of the procedures that's been done for a long time, actually. And uh, the concept here is that I think that the, the example of a train that, uh, that Drew talked about is a good one. When you have a obstructed or damaged uh, uh, train track, one way you can allow the train to go through is to create another pathway for it to go out. So the, the key thing here is that you are bypassing obstruct lymphatic, so damaged train. If the train track is not damaged, there's no point of you bypassing it, in my mind. You're just kind of wasting time. You could actually make things worse. Um, but when we're doing a lymphovenous bypass, and uh, uh, there's some other questions uh, that we need to answer. Uh, where should we bypass it? Uh, you, just wanna, you don't want to just bypass randomly anywhere. Uh, and uh, is, uh, is doing more bypass actually better? You know, the more you do better, or is it, does it make any sense to do more? And if you have lymphatic vessels that's not damaged or obstructed, should you bypass that anyway? Um, and then we talked about superficial versus deep lymphatic system, which Dr. Uh, Bocardino will talk about. I don't know if you're going to talk about it. I know you talk about lympha, but you know, the, the, the Genova group has really advocated for a number of years. Uh, the currently a lot of uh, lymphovenous bypass surgery as well as a lot of lymphatic uh, uh, surgery, uh, the advance that's been made has been largely due to have to give a lot of credit to Dr. Koshima uh, from uh, Tokyo, uh, who used to be in University of Tokyo, who kind of introduced this idea of super microsurgery. So in microsurgery, we've been doing this for a long time for various different things, right? But super microsurgery is where you are doing microsurgery at a very, very small level, less than a millimeter. And uh, that's where the lymphatic vessels often superficial ones are, the size from 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.3 millimeters. And the veins are, the branches of the veins are very, very small. And the concept here is that, you know, the fluid dynamic goes from high pressure to low. If you are, if you're connecting into a higher pressure system, fluid is not going to go that way. You're not a salmon, you know, you're not going to go upstream. <laughs> so, at the superficial level where the system is low, then, f then the, if, if the lymphatic fluid is high, it's going to naturally flow that way. But if you connect it to, to the vein that's got high pressure, well, the blood's going to go into the lymphatic system. It's just not going to go up. Um, and another uh, uh, th key thing that, that uh, a lot of people understand now, but we didn't know in the past, is that the lymphatic vessels are a dynamic system. They're smooth muscles that pump it up. So that, uh, you know, how would the fluid get up from the foot up to the heart? It's against the uh, gravity. So you have to push it up. There are valves in there. So there, this, this having this functioning lymphatic smooth muscle is an important one. Because if that's broken, if you connect it, would it bypass? Would the fluid go into the vein? Probably not. So I showed this slide earlier this morning. But, you know, as the vessels start to develop uh, disease, I found that when you bypass them, it's not that effective. When you're bypassing lymphatic vessels, they're not going to be able to push it up. That's my thought. Um, so here, uh, I happened to be visiting University of uh, Tokyo, and I saw him doing lymphatic surgery in 2005. I was not interested in lymphatic surgery at the time, but being in a, treating you know, at, a, at a cancer center, or most, a lot of my patients had lymphedema, it kind of interested me that there was actually you could do something that could help these patients. So. This is how it all started. And uh, so when I started doing, this, uh, doing the lymphovenous bypass, uh, back then I was at MD Anderson, you know, the questions I had was, you know, where do I bypass and how many do I bypass? So he was very, very uh, accommodating, very helpful to me. So I would email him and ask him, and, and he would tell me, well, you should make your incision here, 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 just all around the ulnar side of the arm. So this is how I started. Just I made these incisions along the ulnar uh, border. And this is the first study that I uh, initiated uh, at the time. And this is how I did my bypasses. And this is before the ICGN technology has really gone into lymphatic surgery yet. And this is a video of a uh, surgery uh, that I had done at the time. The entire surgery is done under the microscope. I make skin incision under the microscope. And, uh, and I find a little clear lymphatic vessel. And, you know, here it's nice and clear. But sometimes it's hard to find it if you don't know where they are. You're kind of randomly looking for the needle in a haystack, and oftentimes it kind of felt that way. And then I find a little vein, uh, a branch of a vein actually, and the key thing here is that there's no clamp on the vein, there's no backflow. So if there's blood gushing out, I will usually not use that, or I'll try to go anti to it instead. 
So and then you just hand, hand stitch it. So those are the little backgrounds we use to make, you know, for us to see the vessels better. That's one millimeter grid. So you can use that as a guide to see how small these things are. That's my 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeter. And then, uh, and then you just kind of hand stitch it with the little tiny little sutures. And, uh, um, and then the fluid will hopefully go from lymphatic into the vein. So this was a, a, how it all started. And we were able to see some improvement in a lot of patients. And uh, things kind of start to uh, 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 become more you know, uh, interested in this lymphatic surgery, uh, start to become more uh, uh, popular. And at the time, in this publication, I looked at my data. And I also looked at, did the number of bypasses make any difference? And I, and I looked at them. And uh, uh, this was not statistically significant, but I have found that it didn't seem to be making any difference. So number of bypass really didn't make difference. And uh, what I thought at the time uh, was that I thought that there are two things that were important. The, the quality of the lymphatic vessel that I'm bypassing and the extent of the disease of that the tissue has already developed. Once you develop that uh, extensive disease, the LV bypass probably didn't work. And, and then I also thought that it would be great if I can, you know, find if there's a way to better identify functioning lymphatic vessels. And then ICGN technology became popular in the lymphatic uh, surgery. You inject ICGN into the skin, it's picked up by lymphatic system, and then you can actually visualize lymphatic vessels before even doing the surgery. And it really helped us, uh, in my mind, for me, it was very helpful for, uh, to moving on to a next level in doing my uh, lymphatic surgery. So he, this is a normal arm uh, with a lymphatic vessel, and this is a, uh, our veins that are, uh, you can see dark shadow. So I think this is, maybe this is Alex's arm, maybe he was a fellow, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this is how it looks in a lymphedema arm. And uh, you've already seen pictures of this. These are dermal backflows. In such, essentially, it's the lymphatic capillaries that are dilated. And you don't see those linear pattern of lymphatics anymore because they're damaged. They're not draining. Uh, so, but this helps us identify where I can do the bypass. Uh, so this is how I start my surgery. Uh, I know different people do different ways. But what I do is uh, I do it in the OR. Uh, first thing I do is when patients are asleep, it can be painful, the injection of those. I don't know if any of you had those injections done. Um, I, I inject in ICGN between the web spaces, and I use my uh, infrared camera, and I will map out the arm. And I like to do it right away because then I can see the lymphatic vessels mo tra uh, moving forward, and I can map it out immediately. If you wait a while, the entire arm or the leg will become completely white with all the dermal backflow. Then you cannot really see those vessels. So. I just took some snapshots of examples of the uh, different patients to give an idea. So here are injections. This is an arm. This is a hand. Here are the lymphatic vessels that you see multiple of them. This one's actually going all the way there. Here's a dermal backflow. So where would I bypass? I, so I try to bypass be, here somewhere. Here's a vein. So I maybe, maybe I bypass this one, this one, this one. This one going all the way across, I probably won't bypass. I'll just leave it alone. Okay. Um, and this is another one here. This is a snapshot. You can see lymphatic vessel going here, dermal backflow. So you can bypass somewhere around here. And another one. I, I'll bypass one right here. Some people go, well, should I bypass multiple places of the same lymphatic? I don't know. I guess you could say that there are some uh, vertical uh, connections, but you know, I think it seems like uh, doing multiple times the same track probably doesn't make much sense. So I usually just do one. Um, here, another one, more severe one. So I can bypass one here, bypass one here. This one, dermal backflow, I bypass. You can do one bypass here and probably by, be able to drain both of them. This one is going all the way. This is elbow. Should I bypass that one? To me, I don't. Because I think that one's going all the way to the axilla. I can scan it all the way up there. It's draining. So why should I bypass it? If I cut it and if I connect it and if it doesn't work, actually, I could make things worse. But that's my thought. And so this one, too. Should I bypass this one? No, I, I don't bypass that one. So I mark out, I, this is how I you know, mark out where I'm going to bypass, how many I'm going to bypass. And I inject uh, 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 epinephrine so that uh, when I make the incision under the microscope, there's no blood there. I wait about 10 minutes. And then I also inject lymphazurin, which can be very helpful if the lymphatic turns up blue. It's very easy to see. And this is how it looks without a microscope. Under the microscope, you can see this is uh, actually a good lymphatic vessel. Uh, and here's little one, one that's a little bit diseased. You can see a little bit of cobblestone appearance there. 
And here's one that with isosulfan blue, uh, blue uh, dye. And now there has been advances in a number of things. Now we have ICGN, we have uh, better instruments, we have better smaller needles. So here is an example again of a, a LV bypass uh, being done. And what you see here is that again, there's no clamp on this vein, no blood coming back. And there's a lot of lymphatic fluid coming out of the lymphatic vessel. So uh, hopefully once I connect it, fluid will spontaneously go in from the lymphatic into the vein. That's the goal, that's the goal. Um, so. Uh, usually, uh, we operate a little bit faster than that, but this is slow down just for you. Um, so what I do want to show is that the, uh, at the end, I'm going to be just you know, showing when we do a little bit of uh, what we call milk test, you can see the vein just gets filled up with lymphatic uh, fluid immediately, and that's a good bypass. And uh, uh, another way I always check is that the, um, and you can see the different tip, you can do different bypasses, end to end, it's like vascular surgery, end to side, some people do what's called side to end, uh, and uh, depending on the uh, uh, type of uh, vein you have and the size match. And I also, with this ICGN technology, with a lot of microscopes now have this fluorescent, this uh, infrared camera in it, you can just switch, switch it on and you can see it like this. You see here's a lymphatic going into the uh, vein. And so I always check to see if the lymphatic, uh, the ICGN is going from lymphatic into the vein. And here is a, a same picture uh, on a regular uh, microscope uh, with the blue dye going in there. So confirming the patency uh, kind of gives me an, uh, uh, an idea that actually what I just did is actually working, at, at least at, in the OR. And if it doesn't, if nothing goes in there, of course, it's not going to work. So I cut it down and cut it back and redo it again. Here's another example of lymphatic. A bypass uh, with under with ICGN, and if they are very really large, you can use this device called a coupler, which is a little uh, device that brings a vessel together. And I've done that a few times. Uh, in fact, I just did one uh, last week, so maybe like three or four times. I've done it. When they are bigger than a millimeter, you could potentially do it. So this was a little bit of a, a bigger series uh, a few years ago that I did with the uh, 100 consecutive cases. Uh, demonstrating a little bit of better uh, result than my uh, initial uh, 20. And what I found uh, in my experience is that, again, what, what I had uh, originally thought was that the, the earlier, uh, earlier or the milder lymphedema you have with the better lymphatic vessels and the, um, uh, that the, the result will be better than once you develop a chronic uh, problem. So here we go. Lymphovenous bypass appears to be more effective in patients with the early stage lymphatic lymphedema with intact functioning uh, lymphatic vessels and minimal tissue fibrosis. And uh, ICGN really helped uh, facilitate identifying these functioning uh, lymphatic vessels. Um, and I think patient selection is important. So I, I think if you have a patient with a severe lymphedema, it's not as good. Uh, using the ICGN really helped me to find the uh, uh, lymphatic vessels that are best to bypass. Uh, and uh, uh, become very selective on how many. I don't think it's how many you do that matters. I think it's quality that matters. Uh, and uh, uh, it also helps uh, confirm patency of bypass. And I think having a right type of mic uh, instrument is very important. So when we started it, we struggled because of lack of these. But there's no reason for us to struggle anymore. There are great microscopes out there. There are instruments out there. I have uh, you know, friends and colleagues who will come and say, you know, I tried this bypass. It doesn't work. I cannot see anything. Well, maybe you should get a different microscope, get a different instrument, so maybe you know, go to the lab and practice a little bit. It's not an easy operation. Just because you are doing a D-flap or a big vessel, uh, these are much smaller things, so you do have to kind of practice a little bit. And, uh, uh, but, like I tell the patients, I can do bypasses. Sometimes it doesn't work, even if I think all the bypasses uh, 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 I did are well, good ones. Will it make lymphedema worse? I think if you're just kind of bypass all of them, I think you potentially can. That's what I'm afraid of, that what if I make it worse? So far, I haven't had anybody who get worse. It hasn't, it, maybe it doesn't work, but I don't want it to make it get worse. So where to bypass? I, I, I like to bypass the functional lymphatic vessels that are obstructed, uh, not necessarily the more is, more is better, quality over quantity, and I, I try to preserve all the uninjured lymphatics. Uh, so that's, this is, uh, Superficial and deep? I mean, that's another, okay, sorry. <laughs> it was interrupted a few times. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>